Hi, my name is Rachel Paxton. Today I'm here to show you how to make pizza sauce and to can it. I'm excited to show this to you. This is the first time I've made this and I'm excited about how it turned out. It turned out really great. This is another good way that you'll be able to use the tomatoes you grow during the summer. What will you get out of this class? In this class you'll learn how to make and can pizza sauce. I'll lead you through the process step by step. I'll give you the recipe and canning supply list that you'll need to download and print out for future reference. You'll find those in your course materials and you'll also gain the confidence you need to try out more canning recipes on your own. My name is Rachel Paxton. I'm a freelance writer and mom of five children ages 28 to 6. This is me and my husband Dave. We've been married for 20 years and these are three of my children. Zachary and Christian are twins. They're almost 11 and Trenton is 6. We have a 28 and a 26 year old daughter also. I've been canning for more than 20 years and I'm also the owner of the website creativehomemaking.com. This recipe has a lot of ingredients. Don't let that scare you. Um, it takes a lot, 22 pounds of tomatoes for this recipe, but you can cut this recipe in half if you'd like. Just make sure to cut everything in half. Um, one pound of tomatoes is approximately three cups of chopped tomatoes to give you a guide of how much tomatoes that is. You will also need three cups of chopped onions, six garlic cloves, a quarter of a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of dried basil, a tablespoon of dried oregano, a tablespoon of dried thyme, a tablespoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of sugar or honey, two tablespoons of salt, and bottled lemon juice. Um, I grew some of my own herbs this year, so I was excited to use some of my dried basil in this recipe. It's a great way to use herbs that you grow. Um, next year, I'm going to grow some oregano and thyme so I can add some more homemade or homegrown herbs to my recipes. You're also going to need a boiling water canner, a canning rack if you're using your own stock pot, a jar lifter, a wide mouth funnel, a pint or half pint canning jars. For this recipe I think I used about 28 half pint jars which would be 14 pint jars. Um, this recipe, you're welcome to mix and match the jars. If you think you might want pint jars for some recipes and half pint jars for other recipes, that is fine. You can do both. And um, you might also find it helpful to have a food mill to do this, to get rid of the seeds and tomatoes from your, the seeds and peels from your tomatoes. I'll show you how that works. And an immersion blender is also really handy. You will find links to these on your supply list with your course materials if you would like to see which ones I recommend. Here is a boiling water canner. Um, if you don't have one, Amazon's a great place to order one. It's only about $32 to order a beginner's kit that includes the canner and the canning rack and the wide mouth funnel and the jar lifter. So that's a pretty good deal for $32 and they'll ship it straight to your house for you and that will get you started with boiling water canning. This is what the canning rack looks like. It costs about $10 for this. It comes with the kit, but if you want to use your own stock pot for boiling water canning, which you can, you can put this canning rack in the bottom of it to keep the jars off the bottom so they don't break. And the pot also needs to be big enough that you can put an inch of water above your jars in the pot. This is what the jar lifter looks like. The wide mouth funnel is really nice. These are made for, for canning so that they sit in the jar. And it just makes it easy to put the stuff in there without the funnel falling out. You don't have to hold on to it. This is what a food mill looks like. They're about $50. It's a little bit of an investment, but if you're going to do very much canning, you're really going to want one of these. They're great for making sauces and applesauce, and I uh, used it to make my homemade V8 juice also. So I've used this a lot since I've got it. So it's not absolutely necessary, but if you're going to do very much canning, you're really going to want to get one of these because it keeps you from having to peel your fruits and vegetables, and it also gets the seeds out for you. You may have seen one of these before. You might even have one. This is an old-fashioned food mill. 
the one I just showed you is a hand cranked version, but this one is what people used to use to make applesauce and sauces. And if you have one of these or you see one at the thrift store, pick it up. These are kind of fun. I actually use mine for decoration now. This was my mom's, but, um, but they work just as well. You can use this too. An immersion blender is really neat. They're about $20 and I really recommend this if you cook a lot. An immersion blender goes into your pan and it blends it just like you put it in the blender and that's really handy when you want to blend something up really smooth. Um, you can take the sauce out of the pan and put it in the regular blender but this is a lot easier. And it, and it comes apart too. It, um, it comes apart into two pieces so it stores away really easily too and washes off easily. A uh, vegetable chopper is also an optional item. I love this vegetable chopper. I think it's about $25. It has two or three different blades and if you're making salsa or you're making anything that you need to chop up with lots of vegetables like it works great for bell peppers and onions and tomatoes. It just makes chopping really, really easily. If you see on the side, it um, also measures how much how much um, vegetables are in there. So if you need three cups, it shows you that you have three cups, so you don't even have to measure it. First, you want to prepare the tomatoes. For this recipe, I was a little short on tomatoes. It's not tomato season here right now, so I had to go through my pantry and dig out what tomatoes I could. Uh, you see I actually used them in a can from the store, which I wouldn't normally do, but I was really short on tomatoes. I also had some jars of tomatoes that I'd canned last year that I needed to use up, and I also had some frozen in the freezer. So as you can see, you can get tomatoes and preserved tomatoes in a lot of different ways, and so it doesn't really matter where they came from. If it's frozen, just thaw it out. The main thing is that you're going to want to run them through the food mill to get the peels and the seeds out of them. The ones in the can here are fine the way they are. You can just put them in your big stock pot to make the sauce, but um, the ones that I had frozen still had the seeds in them. So I had to run them through my food mill. And when you run them through the food mill, the seeds and the skin stay in the top and the rest goes through to the bottom. And I chopped my onions with my chopper. And mince the garlic cloves. That's almost a whole head of garlic. So we've got six cloves for this recipe. And that's what it looks like after I minced it. So the first thing you want to do is get a really big stock pot and saute the onions and garlic in the olive oil until they're soft, about five minutes. Next, you want to add the tomatoes and the spices and simmer everything for 30 minutes. For a smoother sauce, you can use an immersion blender or remove the sauce in small batches and blend in the blender. You don't have to do this. If you want a chunky sauce, then you don't have to do this at all, but I wanted a smooth sauce. Next, you want to simmer the sauce for another one to two hours until the sauce is the desired thickness. As you can see from the pan, the sauce has gone down at least an inch, maybe two inches from when it started. So that means the water is evaporating and it's getting thicker. So there's no set time on this, just when it is the thickness that you want it to be. And while that is cooking, you can fill your canner about three quarters, three quarter three quarters of full with water and start it boiling. And you also want to sterilize your jars, rings and lids in the dishwasher. Um, if you're reusing jars, you that is fine. You can reuse your jars and rings. You just can't reuse lids, so you need to buy new lids. For the lemon juice, the lemon juice does not go in the sauce. It goes in the individual jars. So after you sterilize the jars, you want to put lemon juice in each jar, one tablespoon per pint or half a tablespoon per half pint. Next, you want to ladle the sauce into the jars, leaving a half an inch headspace. The headspace is the amount of space between the top of the sauce and the top of the jar. It's important that you have the right amount of headspace because when you're processing the jars in the boiling water, the 
stuff in the jar will expand so if there's not enough space left in the jar and it expands too much it can make your jar break and you don't want that to happen so each recipe has its own amount of head space jams and jellies require the most amount or the least amount of head space and usually the most amount of head space is required when you're pressure canning but for this recipe you need a half an inch of head space Next, you want to wipe the rims of the jars with a damp paper towel or dish towel to make sure there's no sauce on the top of the jars that will keep your jars from sealing. So wipe those off and place your rings and lids on the jars. Just put them on finger tight. You don't want them super tight. Next, you want to put the jars in the canner. Make sure there's an inch of water above the jars. You need to add more water if there's not. Um, when you when the jars first get put in there, if the water's not boiling yet, that's okay. Just heat the water up till it's boiling and start timing as soon as it starts boiling. You want it to boil for 35 minutes. Um, this time is for altitudes 1,000 feet or below. If you live above 1,000 feet in elevation, you're going to need to increase your processing time to get the water hot enough. And so there's an altitude adjustment chart in your course materials, so check that if you need to otherwise just process it for 35 minutes use your jar lifter to take the jars out and put them on a towel to cool let your jars sit on the counter till they're cooled off when you when the jar is sealed you should hear a pinging noise you can test the jar by pushing your finger down in the middle of it and if it goes down and up again then it's not sealed it should be flat and if you do have a jar or two that don't seal then you can put them in the refrigerator and use them in the next week or two if it does seal which they should I hardly ever have jars that don't seal but um, if they are sealed then you want to store them in a dark cool area for one to two years this pizza sauce is really delicious you can use it for homemade pizza or for breadsticks that's what I'm looking forward to using it for and I'm excited to not have to run to the store when I want some pizza sauce I have about 24 jars of pizza sauce now so that's pretty exciting and I hope you have fun with this too and I hope to see you again soon